So on Sunday, we were looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we said that the most important two-word phrase in all of human history are the two words that begin verse 4, but God. And it's the most important two-word phrase in all of human history because it speaks to the truth of verses 1, 2, and 3 that humanity, because of its rebellion against God, is enslaved to the worship of things that will never satisfy, things other than the God who created us. And that enslavement and that rebellion results in our destruction. But God does not leave us in that state. In fact, God acts in the midst of human history to take those who were dead and make them alive again, to raise us up and to seat us with positions of honor and authority with God in heaven, not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus has done for us. And that is what the concept of grace is all about. And we talked about that in the sermon, but what I left on the desk was a little discussion about how that that phrase, but God, is not just a theoretical thought game that might be useful to you in some eternal sense, but it's actually extremely practical in how we seek to live right now. See, but God is not just, in verse 4, not just the most important two-word phrase in the history of human speech because it changes our eternity, and it does, but also because it changes our now. Look, this is what I mean, right? But God is extremely practical right now. For example, do you often feel like you don't understand God? Like there's just things you don't get about the way the world works and about how he made it, right? You don't see the hope that God has promised in the world around you right now. It all seems blurry. You ever feel like that? Well, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul says, No eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And we are ignorant of these things. And we don't see these things clearly. It's true that God has prepared great things for us, but we don't see them clearly. We're ignorant of these things. But then Paul says, But God has revealed them to us by his Spirit. In other words, even though we don't always see things clearly, God has provided the means for us to be able to see clearly the revelatory power of the Holy Spirit. Another example, do you often feel tempted to sin, to to rebel against God? I know that sin word is unpopular, but, but do you feel tempted to do things that you know are not the right thing to do, and yet you still feel the pull, right? And all the but God stuff doesn't seem like it can help you. Well, but it does. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that temptation is common to all of humanity. But God, he says, is faithful and will provide a way out in the midst of your temptation. Another example. Do you feel foolish sometimes in the eyes of others? Right? Your, your classmates, your teammates, your co-workers, your family. Maybe foolish because of what you believed. Are you made to feel foolish? Well, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 that the world will consider Christians foolish, but God shows the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, the weak to shame the strong, the lowly and the despised to eliminate the boasting of the high and the honored, but God. Last example, are you or have you ever been the victim of someone else's sin, the victim of injustice? Jacob's son Joseph, way back in Genesis, Genesis chapter 50, said to his brothers, the brothers who tried to kill him earlier in his life, he said, you intended to harm me, but God intended what you did for good to accomplish what is now being done. In other words, God was still at work, even in the midst of the injustice. He never abandoned his throne or his care for Joseph. And the same is true for us. All of this together tells us that there is no lack of knowledge, no sin, no temptation, no shame, no oppression that is outside of God's power to redeem because you are made alive, you are raised up, and you are seated with Christ. That's what was left on the desk.